What's up, Dean? How are we doing? Today, I want to go through our six-phase dynamic warm-up that we do, um, which is taken from the PPSC course, right? Pain-Free Performance Specialist Certification source, uh, Course. Dr. John Rusin basically um, has kind of like laid out a template, right? Which is kind of what we use for our semi-privates, for our group training as well, right? It really gives us a great systemized step-by-step um, -step progressive workout that kind of gets our members primed and ready for the movements that we're going to do in the workout. Now, what we generally find, right, is between P1 and P6, we're working on that major movement for that day. All right, so if we have a hinge pattern, the, the P1 to P6, we f uh, fully focused on that hinge pattern, if that is a major lift for that day, right? I'll flip around in a second and show you like the work that we've done today, which is hinge orientated. Um, but basically there's, there's P1 to P6, all right? There may be one, in, one above this, which is like reset effectively. Um, if, for instance, people come in and they're heightened and they're stressed and they're like anxious, etc., to bring the heart rate down, to drive their central nervous system down, to get into more parasympathetic state before we then load them up into that sympathetic state again, ready for the workout. All right, because we don't want them into the workout heightened, stressed, um, and then keep them in, round up that way throughout the workout, right? Because that's perhaps when overtraining, overreaching, over a period of time obviously occurs, injuries pick up, form decreases, all right? Um, so we really want to go through this really systemized way, all right? And, that first bit, the reset bit, may have to be judged on who's in the workout and the level of like uh, level in, uh, of uh, intensity they have come into the workout. Whether they're like aggressive, shouting, etc. Whether they're like anxious and the shoulders are raised. Or if everyone's coming in chilled, relaxed, maybe we don't need to do the one that's not here. Hence why we haven't included it here yet. But P1, right, is always self myofascial release. Okay, so this kind of like format here, this is like P1 to P6, will be around six minutes long. Okay, that's it. Um, we can always double it up and go two minutes per one to make it 12, 12 minutes in total, but we don't have to, all right? Um, so, for instance, uh, P1 B release, so that's like self myofascial release. That could be active mobility balls, like cross balls, etc. all right? Foam rollers, soft tissue work, right? So, for instance, um, we're just trying to improve the quality of the tissue. If we're working um, uh, with a foam roller, we don't want to be working globally, all right, over that position, right, of that muscle, right? We want to be working in a short period of time, a uh, short period of space, right? Where we generally find, uh, okay, it's like t it feels the tightest or it feels the stiffest, etc. If we're working, like, uh, if we're doing glutes, for instance, because we have a hinge day, and we're doing a uh, foam rolling in the glutes, what we may find is that we're only going back two or three inches on that foam roller, right? So we're kind of rolling over that two or three inches, not the whole muscle. If we work the whole muscle, that'll downregulate it, which we don't want to do when we're in the workout, right? So um, we're looking to kind of fire it up a little bit and stimulate it. So we're working like short, short uh, movements back and forth. On this release pit here, right, the foam roller, we might not necessarily do that though in the group training because we don't have enough foam rollers um, and coaching everyone in that might be a bit difficult. Um, maybe down the line in the future, we will get enough foam rollers, therefore we can do that, but we won't be doing it for this one here, all right, um, for the group training. So any kind of team training element, we generally won't do the release of foam roller stuff, the soft tissue work, unless say there's like three or four people in the workout and we can do that, right? Um, Perhaps it's a case of getting foam rollers and allowing them to do that before the workout. We're then going to go into dynamic stretches. So with the stretches themselves, we want to work again uh, the load specific, right? So if it is a hinge pattern, we work in adductors and glutes more so than quads, right? Um, so with the dynamic stretches, we'll go for three of them, which is now rubbed off here. Um, but we're going to go for three of them, all right? So let's say, for instance, a dynamic stretch would be like a 90-90 position moving forward and back into a rock back, okay, um, into some sort of other glute, kind of like pigeon pose, et cetera, or something like that, just to kind of get a little bit of movement, a little bit of stretching in that position. What we'll do, again, is like 15 to 30 seconds of that stretch, and then we may kind of like actively like push our knee into the ground to get a little bit more force production through that stretch, right, to load up uh, uh, and create tension in that muscle. So for instance, if it's a 90-90 um, and I am like right foot forward. I might drive that right knee into the ground just to get a little bit more like load and tension and awareness and neuromuscular stimulation through that kind of right glute, if that makes sense. For like five to 10 seconds, then we flip it to the other side. As I mentioned, this is a minute long each one. So you may do 30 seconds one side, 30 seconds the other side. Um, that's 20 seconds of stretching, 10 seconds of that kind of neuromuscular activation work where I'm driving it to the ground. If it's a rock back and my foot's out to the side, then maybe 20 seconds of rocking forward and back and then 10 seconds of driving that foot hard into the ground to kind of fire up the adductor. All right, we're then gonna go into corrective, so positional uh, specific work. 
So if it is, um, if it is uh, say, let's say a hinge position, we may do dead bugs, okay? And that's just loading up our spine, creating stability through the trunk, okay? Um, and that's like two to four reps per side, perhaps, okay? So it's just positional specific, depending on the, the movement, right? That's just corrective. Um, as I mentioned, dead bugs are, are generally a pretty good one. Uh, it could be bird dogs, etc. Alternative, it could be uh, just a bear crawl position, all right, with some like specific, specific movements and that. But generally speaking, we're just trying to stabilize like the pillar, the shoulders, core, and hips. And that's all we're looking to do within that positional specific uh, corrective movement, if that makes sense. Again, that will be 30 seconds per side, one minute per uh, one minute total. From that, we're into the pattern activation work, right? So if we are doing a, um, if we are doing, let's say, uh, a hinge again, it could be a hip thrust position. So we're kind of like peeling that lower back off the floor, squeezing our glutes as and tights. So kind of bursting, bursting the grape between our butt cheeks. All right, uh, that could be single leg. Uh, again, it could be bilateral stance, etc. It could be B stance, uh, depending on the level of uh, quality or level of cap capabilities within that actual workout itself, All right? It could be obviously if it's push pull uh, specific, it could be some like banded face pulls or some pull downs. If I'm working a hinge as well, perhaps it could be a pull down to kind of like engage my lats, to kind of create that kind of like uh, stability in the upper back. If we need to go into like a, an RDL, it gives us a good like practice into that, if that makes sense. Um, again, that is another minute long. All right, maybe it's five to 10 reps, three sets, okay? Um, so you'll do like five reps, rest a few seconds, another five, rest a few seconds, and another five. We're then going to movement pattern specific. So from that position, they'll generally stand up. We may get them, if it is a hinge movement for that day RDL, we may get everyone to the wall. Okay, we may grab a ball, slam ball. We may be doing like a, a good morning as such with our bum driving into the wall to kind of position that load up uh, pretty well. Uh, again, it'll be quite a light load. Okay, it's nothing too intense. So again, it might be no weight. I might be driving my hips back, reaching forward to load up position, just get people primed for that movement. Um, as I mentioned, it could, if it's a squat, it could be holding a, a five kilo plate in the bottom of squat position, just rotating the hips a little bit, getting a little bit like looser in that position. Or it could be uh, just pure body weight uh, squats as well. Um, and then we're into obviously three to 20 reps of that, all right? Depending, like if, it's, uh, if it is like, for instance, like we could be doing like a face pull or a banded pull apart in this position, if we're doing like some T-Rex rows, it may be 20 reps, right, on the banded foot, like uh, pull aparts, because three reps of that isn't going to be enough to kind of drive that stimulation that we want. Um, and then again, that's like three to five sets, maybe two sets, so well. again, it's a minute long. And then it'll be sinus development, all right? This is the ramp up, this is the temperature increase, and this is getting the central nervous system fired up for that warm up, for, uh, sorry, for that specific lift of that day. Okay, so let's say, for instance, it's, uh, if it is a hinge position, it may be like a vertical jump where I'm driving my hips back into a hinge position and I'm exploding up, driving up, as, as getting as much height as I can. That could be three reps of that, again, like three to four times. If it is, um, if it is let's say, a push press for that day, we want to reach, right? So it could be with a slam ball, driving up, <laughs> slamming into the ground. Again, three to five reps. If it is uh, like a, a bench press for the day, like a, a dumbbell incline bench, it could be with a uh, like a, ch a chest slam so in that hinge position, driving that ball hard into the ground to really kind of generate force through it. It could be a throw into the wall, again, to kind of get that drive up um, and get that central nervous system fired up, all right? Uh, and again, that is like, I'd say a minute long again in total, but what you'll generally find is that like it's three to five reps again. So nothing too crazy, a few seconds rest in between, two to five reps. All right, so if I go through this kind of stuff, it could be foam rolling the glutes if it is a hip orientated. Um, it could be like 20, 30 seconds per side. Then it could be 1990s um, rock backs in a pigeon pose, or it could just be uh, 1990s rock backs, 20 to 30 seconds on each one per side. And then we into dead bugs, two to four reps per side. Then into hip thrusts, five to 10 reps, three sets roughly uh, into a hinge to the wall. Um, three to 20 reps, depending on what that movement pattern is. Again, like I said, if it's a face pull or something, it may be a little bit more reps, and then into vertical jumps to drive them up, and then we'll get into the workout, right? So, as you can see, today's one, we had a hex bar RDL, right? Uh, so, this is the KPI for that day. That's the major movement for that day. That sole focus of that warm up is getting primed for that hex bar RDL or barbar RDL, whatever it may be, all right? The landmine press will get enough stimulation from the hex bar RDL 
to, to warm up on that landmine press, all right, because that's a single arm, that's 12 reps. All right, so we're not, we are focused on it, but the, the, the major concern is that, is that one here, right? The first one, that's the one we want to kind of generate as much uh, stimulation for, right? That's our development kind of like exercise. All right, that's what we're looking to kind of like progressively overload. So it's really important that we kind of like drive that warm up through to that hex bar ideal. And again, if it's squat, push, pull, pad, and whatever it may be, the warm up is slightly different, obviously, according to that first major movement uh, of that day. Sweet, that's it. Hope that makes sense. Any questions, give me a shout below.